Hello and welcome to the New York Foreign Press Center's briefing with Alejandra Castillo, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Academic Development, and Eric Smith, Tech Hub's Program Director, also from the Department of Commerce's Economic Development Administration. My name is Daphne Staropoulos and I'll be the moderator. Before we get started, let's go over a few logistics. This briefing is on the record. It will be transcribed and the transcript will be posted on our website upon its completion. Let's begin. The Assistant Secretary will brief you on the Regional Innovation and Technology Hubs Program and administration efforts to catalyze in, in investment in technologies critical to economic growth, national security, and job creation. She'll be the, get, then passing the floor to Mr. Smith for his comments. And after their opening remarks, I will moderate the Q&A session. And with that, it's a pleasure to turn the floor over to Assistant Secretary Castillo. Welcome and thank you. Well, thank you very much, Daphne, and um, it's a pleasure to be here in New York City, my hometown. Um, I want to start by giving you a bit of perspective. You know, I'm the Assistant Secretary for Economic Development at the U.S. Department of Commerce, and in at Commerce, we have 13 different agencies. Why is that important? Because at the end of the day, all of these different agencies are actually working towards one goal, and that is to support uh, economic growth and U.S. businesses across the. Uh, Spectrum, but I want to just emphasize a couple of uh, of agencies within commerce that I'm sure you all know. The International Trade Administration is part of commerce. The U.S. Census Bureau is part of commerce. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office is part of commerce. Uh, you've heard of the Chips and Science Act. Uh, I'm sorry, you've heard about Chips. Chips is under the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is part of commerce. Commerce is also um, uh, NTIA, National Telecommunication and Information Agency. Uh, administration, I should say, which is uh, currently deploying $48 billion for internet, uh, the internet for all, which is part of the Biden-Harris administration. I wanted to give you that perspective just to contextualize what is the U.S. Department of Commerce. And uh, let me also mention National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is also part of commerce. You probably know it by the acronym NOAA. Um, and then we have EDA, Economic Development Administration. And while EDA is a domestically focused bureau, we are actually working to uh, foster international investments, uh, best practice sharing, as well as supply chain technology. What I am here to talk to you about today is the uh, incredible investments that are being made by the Biden-Harris administration. Four major pieces of legislation that I'm sure you're all familiar with at this point, the American Rescue Plan, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Chips and Science Act, and um, um, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. Those four pieces of legislation in one way or another, in one shape or form, are truly really driving economic growth and technology and supporting technology across the board. Um, EDA in particular um, has been at the forefront of most of this, uh, of this uh, investment. We started out under the American Rescue Plan with the uh, Build Back Better Regional Challenge, which was a $1 billion challenge across the, across the country to identify those places uh, that have tremendous assets and are at the forefront of technology uh, and innovation. We also focused on uh, the Good Jobs Challenge, which is directly looking at workforce development, uh, which no matter where I go across not only this country, but also abroad, Workforce development is a key issue. While I mentioned at the beginning that EDA is primarily focused uh, um, on the domestic agenda, we I just returned not too long ago, around uh, two months ago from Germany, where I participated in the um, uh, uh, shaping regional tech, uh, shaping regional transformation, and this was uh, an invitation by the German government to talk again uh, about how is the U.S making these investments and what is that transformational change. That was a very important visit. Um, I'll also underscore that EDA participates uh, uh, with the American Competitiveness Exchange. That's a program that both Commerce and the State Department work um, to ensure that the Western Hemisphere um, is also a part of this dialogue. So in um, as we continue talk about not only what the U.S. is doing and why is this important, you may ask. This is important because we know that we need more um, equitable economic growth. 
And when I speak about equitable economic growth, it is a promise that President Biden has made to make sure that places and people um, are not left behind, that as we move through this technological change, that we're engaging on all, all fronts uh, with regard to not only stakeholders, but more importantly with workforce across the country. Um, I just want to take a few minutes and talk to you also about uh, under the Chips and Science Act, um, there was a program, there is a program called Tech Hubs, and my colleague Eric Smith will go more in details about Tech Hubs. But I do also want to talk about Recompete, which is a program that the um, Department of Commerce is currently uh, reviewing and will soon announce, and that's $200 million focusing on places where um, the prime age employment gap, prime age defined uh, ages between 25 and 54, um, is at an all-time high. So we are looking at those places across the U.S. where we, too, need to focus on making sure that there is equitable economic growth. Um, that announcement is soon to be, uh, soon to be made. But I guess um, as, I, as I, I pass on the, the microphone to my colleague, what I want to leave you with, uh, with is the following. These are the type of programs that the Biden-Harris administration is putting into place these are the programs where we are uh, also inviting foreign direct investments. Um, as you may know, the Commerce Department hosts the Select USA, which is a uh, convening on an annual basis um, where in, in Washington, D.C., where we actually invite uh, investors from across the globe to look at the United States as a place for uh, solid investment, but more importantly, to look at places where technology and innovation are really uh, taking off. I want to give you um, two examples of places that I invite you to take a look at, and that is um, El Paso, Texas, where uh, which received a Build Back Better Challenge Award. El Paso, Texas is looking at manufacturing. Um, Wichita, Kansas uh, is looking at uh, ways to continue to grow aerospace. Uh, uh, New Hampshire, which is also looking at uh, biotechnology. These are not your common areas. These are not the common Silicon Valley places across the country. But they are places in the U.S. that are really tied to, um, uh, they're at the forefront of innovation. Um, so let me pause there and um, pass it on to Eric Smith. And I'm sure we're going to have some Q&As. Um, this is a truly transformational moment. Um, I have spent uh, most of my career in, um, in and out of, of government, and I will tell you that I've never seen a moment in time uh, like the one that we're living in. Uh, this is important not just from a business and economic perspective, but it's also important to make sure that as we look around the U.S., but also as we look around the globe, that when we talk about tech and innovation, when we talk about economic growth, that we're doing with an eye towards both equity and inclusivity. So with that, let me pass it on to Eric Smith. Thank you, Assistant Secretary. Um, so with respect to the Tech Hubs program, the vision for this program is really for uh, to strengthen economic and national security by enabling the industries of the future to start, grow, and remain. As Alejandro mentioned, not just in the United States, but in regions all throughout the United States, uh, equitably and inclusively. Um, focusing on growth in, in regions that have not always experienced economic and innovation-based uh, economic growth. Uh, this is a $10 billion program uh, as envisioned by Congress, and we are right now in the middle of implementing the first $500 million. 5% of that program, and we're doing that. We're doing this as a as a two phase program. Um, we just at the end of October announced the designees from the first phase, so 31 hubs um, from the out from throughout the United States, um, focused on a variety of different technology areas. Um, those 31 hubs we announced in October, and they'll be competing for funding in phase two, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, shortly. Um, those 31 hubs really run the gamut from central Missouri to New England to the West Coast, um, the Southeast, uh, the upper Midwest. We really have a, a wide variety of geographies represented in that portfolio. Uh, and we also have a wide variety of technologies um, that really span kind of eight primary themes. Um, these run from enabling safe and effective autonomous systems. Um, to helping maintain our edge in quantum information technology, 
um, a couple of themes around biotechnology and advancing biotechnology, um, one around drugs and devices uh, and the next generation of both of those, um, another around precision and prediction, so leveraging data, uh, leveraging information to target and deliver um, better therapy and ultimately result in, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, more positive health outcomes. Um, we're also looking at accelerating our energy transition, uh, whether through renewables generation, through transmission, through storage, um, and then also looking at strengthening our critical mineral supply chain, um, also critical to uh, energy transition. Uh, we also have a, a few focused on semiconductor manufacturing and looking at some of the particular strengths in regions throughout the U.S., um, and a last theme around uh, the future of materials manufacturing, thinking about everything from how do we make polymers uh, more sustainable uh, to how we can use wood in new ways. Um, so how are we actually going to support these hubs? Uh, these 31 hubs, again, are right now um, competing for uh, funding through the second phase of this program. Um, they'll be competing for somewhere around 40 to $70 million each, and of those 31 hubs, we'll be able to fund uh, four, five to 10 of those. Um, those five to 10 hubs will use that funding ultimately in roughly four ways. Uh, so they'll look at ways to support workforce development in their region. Um, how can they make sure that they have the talent and the workforce not only to leverage uh, their strengths in these industries now, but also going forward into the future? They'll also look at business and entrepreneur development. How can they support businesses that are growing? How can they support innovators uh, and folks who would be entrepreneurs in these particular technology areas? Uh, they'll also look at uh, technology maturation and advancement. So how can, how can entrepreneurs and companies demonstrate these technologies uh, how, can, uh, how can regions actually deploy these technologies out into the field? And then infrastructure related to all that. Um, so we are working towards, um, again, getting these applications in from these 31 hubs. Um, their applications are due in February. Um, so they are actively looking for uh, partnerships and commitments in order to strengthen their applications. Um, and we'll be making decisions about this program uh, in the summer of, next, of 2020. Um, so as we pursue, uh, as we pursue a strengthened economic and national security through these hubs, um, as they develop their application, um, we're looking for them to come up with uh, these policy and investment commitments. So what else can they bring to the table? What else can their partners bring to the table? Uh, and we're also looking for them uh, to come forward with the types of projects in workforce development, business development, technology maturation, and infrastructure. Uh, that can support their strategies. Um, so with that, uh, let me open it up, I think, for a Q&A. Thank you so much. Um, to ask a question, just raise your hand and uh, wait for me to call on you. Those participating online, please raise your virtual hand. And uh, just one, one minute. The first question will go to Arno. Hello, Ardo Le Parmentier, <coughs> French Daily Le Monde. Thank you for being here. Uh, well, I have a question. You've said uh, you have only spent 5% of your program. I see many companies are a little bit worried that uh, all the IRAs, the SHIP Act, they have a question, will it last after the election? So can you tell me how much have you already spent of the $270 billion of the uh, IRA and the $52 billion of the SHIP Act? And what make it uh, irreversible uh, in the program, even if the Republicans might come back to power? And third question, how do you tackle the um, renewable energy bubble in, in the, on the stock market? They are all done, and is it an issue for you, for your program? Well, thank you for that question. Let me tackle the first one. You know, um, the dollars have been, in many ways, uh, through the, the many legislations that I, that I mentioned. Um, currently, not only are we working on the design of the program, but also on the deployment of these dollars whether it's the $48 billion that I mentioned at the beginning on, on the uh, broadband, uh, or whether it's on the Chips and Science Act with regards to chips, but also with regards to tech hubs. I just want to clarify a bit. Some of these dollars have been authorized at a particular level, but Congress has to continue to appropriate that. In the case of, the, of tech hubs, $10 billion program that was authorized at that level, but we only received as of, as of this moment, $500 million. So 5% was appropriate 
appropriated by commerce, uh, by Congress. We're trying to, we're continuing to work very, very diligently to make sure that not only are these programs out the door, but that they're actually reaching the communities that they're set. So the work continues. Uh, making sure that they're also institutionalized is important for the long run. Uh, the goal here is not a, a political game, but to actually touch the lives of Americans and transform our economy. So the work that we're doing today, day in and day out, about making sure that we're deploying these dollars with, with um, the great speed, but also making sure that they're reaching the intended um, goal, which is to transform our economy uh, more in, in, in towards the future. It means that all the expenses have to be reapproved, voted a second time by the Congress. Every year you have to vote again? No, it means that some programs have already been fully authorized and appropriated, but other programs have not been fully appropriated. In the case of Tech Hubs, which is what we want to talk about today, it was appropriated at 10 billion, it was authorized at 10 billion. But this particular program, Congress has to continue to put it into the budget. So for this particular program, only 5% of the authorized level has been actually appropriated. Yep. But let's go to Samuel next. Thank you. Shalom uh, from Simula, North America. Not long ago, President Xi and President Biden have agreed to revisit the historic science and technology agreement between the countries. Do you have any update on the negotiations related? And what do you see the importance of continued cooperation between the two countries in these areas? Thank you. So no particular update. I will, I will remind you we are a domestic-focused um, uh, agency. Nonetheless, we continue to support cooperation across our many partners. So um, from that perspective, it it's really lies on the cooperation across, across the globe with regards to technology and innovation. But no specific update to your questions. The next question will go to online to uh, Wang Fan. Wang, can you enable both your audio and video and ask your question? Hi, I'm San Wang with China News Service. So you have uh, mentioned that can, the programs will Mr. be Mr. Fan, can you on. enable your uh, audio, please? We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can think, you hear me now? We can. Go ahead, sir. Okay, I'm Fan Wang with China News Service, and you have just mentioned that the programs will be focusing on equity and inclusivity. So my question is, uh, is there a mechanism uh, in the program that uh, will address the issue of inclusivity, uh, especially regarding the uh, underrepresented groups, uh, for example, the Asian community? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that great question. I actually made a note uh, as part of my closing remarks. I want to underscore the fact that the way EDA and most of uh, our colleagues in the federal government, we have made uh, requirements in our um, notice of funding opportunities. And if you look at our notice of funding opportunities, also called NOFOs, you will see that they are requirements with regards to both equity, inclusion, um, in the case of tech hubs, and I'm sure Eric will talk more about it, um, we're looking at different consortiums. And in the case of the Build Back Better, we actually had partnerships. And these were partnerships that included university, community colleges, workforce boards, uh, nonprofit organizations, philanthropy, because our goal is to make sure that um, we are not only uh, including people at the table, but making sure that we uh, look around and see who's missing. Uh, in the case of the Asian American community, obviously a very important uh, population uh, here in the United States, but also African Americans, uh, Latinos, Native Americans, and bringing them along uh, as participants, but also as key stakeholders of these uh, different grants. So in places uh, where there's a large population representing a variety of um, uh, underrepresented or ethnic population, they are uh, very much involved. Perfect, then. Eric, did you want to 
open source? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, so to build on that a little bit, um, so first of all, uh, in order to apply for, in order to be a designated tech hub, you do a, a consortium. You have to bring a number of different organizations together. Uh, as Alejandro mentioned, that includes uh, institutes of higher ed, uh, workforce and labor organizations, um, state and local governments, et cetera. There are a number of different organizations eligible. I think another thing about the program that's really key to highlight here is that um, equity and inclusion is an evaluation criteria. So as we are looking at the applications that consortia submit, that these 31 hubs submit, we will be explicitly evaluating um, how those hubs are increasing inclusivity, are increasing, increasing equity in these regions. We mean that both in how the, how the benefits of the hubs will accrue to those populations. So, uh, you know, how is how is economic growth happening, um, not just concentrated in a few individuals or institutions, broadly throughout the region. Uh, we'll also be looking at how the leadership of the hub uh, is equitable and inclusive and diverse. And so um, all of the hubs uh, have to uh, tell us who their regional innovation officer is, so who's the accountable person for driving the strategy forward. Um, they, they will come with proposals on how to fund that work, um, and they'll be bringing together, in most cases, boards or committees that, that help guide and steer the hub, and we'll be looking at how those structures uh, are put in place so that those teams are different and so that they uh, are, a, are a forum for uh, all of those voices to, to join in the, the guidance and direction of the hub. Thank you. Uh, the next question will go to uh, Mr. Mohammed. If you wait for the microphone, please. Thank you. Uh, my small question is about the, the investment. Is there any limit minimum or maximum? And the uh, subsequent question, did these incentives are given to the f uh, f foreign investors or domestic as well? And what kind of incentives in case of the foreign investors? Sure. Which uh, outlet are you with? Which outlet are you with today? Which outlet are you with? for. Online news agency. Thank you very much. Pakistan, Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for that question. Um, so the incentives can actually, the, the grant funding uh, can actually go to any of the consortium members. Um, so whether that's an institute of higher ed, whether that's a workforce organization, whether it's the municipal government, um, it can be private companies as well. Uh, the EDA funding can go to uh, that whole universe of consortium members. What we've told consortium members, the guidance we've given them, the way that we'll look at these programs is, is the organization receiving the funding for a particular project really the organization that we would hold accountable for delivering on that? Um, so it's likely natural that workforce organizations would end up with most workforce development projects, of course, supported by um, some of the other institutions and organizations in the consortium. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a technology demonstration project, uh, perhaps it could be led by uh, an institute of higher ed or research organization uh, in partnership with a number of private companies in the, in the region. It, it really depends on the nature of the, of the project. Um, when it comes to foreign companies, um, you know, we uh, are encouraging foreign direct investment. We want uh, hubs to really bring in commitments from all of the organizations that are working in their regions in this particular technology area. Uh, of course, you know, we, we do have the national security aspect of this as well, and so we'll be looking at, at that, um, but, but really want to make sure that these hubs are enabled um, to bring in the resources and commitments from organizations that they work with uh, in this technology area. Um, ultimately, uh, in addition to that national security element, though, uh, we're looking for the economic benefit to really uh, build up in this region. Um, so we expect that most of the funding will um, be spent in the region and most of the benefit will end up in this particular hub. We really are focused on the place-based nature of these investments and, and want to build up these, these regions and their economies. Wait for the microphone. Sorry. Is there any minimum or maximum limit for the investment? I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, so there is not. We expect the aggregate amount that EDA will uh, invest in the communities to be somewhere between 40 and $70 million. Um, it's not a hard minimum. It's not a hard maximum. That's the range we expect, given the, the $500 million we have. Um, and then again, we, we hope that the regions are bringing many other 
investment commitments to the table from their partners in, in private sector, philanthropy, state government, et cetera. Thank you. And the next question will go to Ms. Park online. Ms. Park, can you uh, share your full name, outlet, and country and enable your video? Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I am Shin Young Park from the Korea Economic Daily. And TSM, she has delayed a semiconductor product timeline to 2025, uh, one year later than initially planned. Uh, is there a, a possibility? of further delays and what is the precise reason for TSMC's delay and uh, has there been any concern raised regarding the U.S. semiconductor subsidies? So I understand that you were briefed by the CHIPS uh, team in, in a prior briefing. Uh, we very much uh, connect you. Uh, I know that our colleagues here at the UN would uh, connect you um, with the CHIPS team to give you a much uh, accurate and fuller um, response. Okay. Um, Manek, did you have your question? Your yes. hand up? Go ahead. I'm Manek Mehta. Sorry. Manek Mehta, I'm syndicated. Um, we just had the AI summit in New York a day ago, two days ago. And uh, there were some big Indian companies interested in investing in the U.S. Now, they are looking at uh, investing in the infrastructure projects, uh, which would focus mainly on airports and ports. How open are you to, to that uh, idea? And are there any special incentives you offer, and, and especially the in, uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. So, um, again, happy to connect you with some of our colleagues that are um, in the bipartisan infrastructure um, law uh, group. Um, as it relates to Tech Hubs, which is the Commerce Department program, um, we're looking at different uh, technologies and AI. Um, so that's among the 31 Tech Hubs that were designated. Um, there are several tech hubs that are un, uh, under under the um, artificial intelligence, but happy to connect you um, both on the infrastructure group. May I ask a follow-up sure. question? Uh, can you identify the projects that are open for investments uh, in the infrastructure field? Go ahead. So I, I think the. We don't yet have specific projects because the hubs themselves are right now in, in that project development phase. One thing I would encourage, though, is we've published a lot of information about the hubs on our website, including contact information for the person who's responsible for driving the hub strategy. If there are organizations that are interested in participating, I'd strongly suggest that they take a look at at our whole list of hubs, the regions they're located, the technology areas they're focused on, and reach out to those individuals who are leading that hub strategy. So do you have priority listing for those listings? Ah, so this is a fully competitive uh, application process. So right now they are all on equal footing putting their projects together, and, and once they've put those projects, uh, once they've submitted those applications, we'll be evaluating them competitively without bias. Thank you. We have two questions um, from the Zoom. The first question will go to uh, Bukola. Bukola, please enable your audio and video and introduce yourself and your outlet. Hi, uh, I'm Bukola Shinoga with Global Media at Nigeria. So question, I was wondering how was the opportunity for this, how was, the, how was this opportunity announced? And I remember, uh, Someone mentioned, I think Mr. Smith mentioned just a little while ago that people can find the information on your website. So in terms of equity and inclusion, so if people don't really uh, are not aware of this or they don't know how to you know, go to your website, how, how would they get information so that you can actually you know, achieve this equity and, uh, and inclusion? Yeah, so thank you for that question. Um, Part of what we do is extensive outreach. Uh, we Not only do I travel extensively, my team travels extensively, uh, connecting with uh, many different types of organizations, both public, uh, nonprofit organizations, 
it's is it is one of our primary investment um, priorities uh, on the equity piece. As Eric mentioned, it's also baked into uh, our uh, notice of funding opportunities, but it's also a selective crit uh, selection criteria that we manage. Um, this has been a hallmark of the Biden Harris administration, the equity, uh, um, the equity and inclusion uh, piece of it. And it's uh, it's very simple. Uh, if we do not grow in a uh, equitable and inclusive manner, we're really not revving up, as we would say, all the engines of our economy. And we know we know that this is not only about economic uh, growth. This is also about our, our democracy. And the reason I say that is because if people feel that they're being left behind, they are made to feel invisible, that does that significantly erodes our democracy. So um, there are many ways that we reach out. Um, happy to connect with you as well. Um, but please visit our website. And, you know, I do a lot of outreach in English, in Spanish, and uh, I go to different communities, underserved communities, indigenous communities. So. Um, our team is really on the road, making sure that everyone is listening to not only the invitation to participate, but more importantly, uh, keeping them accountable uh, to this investment priority. Thank you. The next question will go to Alexander. Alexander, please enable your audio and video and introduce yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. I'll try to enable the video. Sorry, the Assistant Secretary talked about uh, visiting Germany recently, um, where the introduction uh, has been very controversially sort of rising American protectionism. Do you feel that these, or to which extent do you feel that these vi uh, visits Alexander. by you and your colleagues from Treasury have actually? Uh, led to a more constructive dialogue Alexander. regarding uh, these Al American Al Alexander, programs. The audio is, is, is not good. It's not clear. We'll go to the next question. Could you type your question in the chat for me, and I will ask it on your behalf? Yep. I'm sorry about that. Mr. Lee from uh, Vietnam Television, please go ahead. We'll come back to Alexander. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, I have two questions, uh, one for Assistant uh, Secretary of Commerce and another for Tech Hub's uh, Program Director. The first one is uh, for Assistant Secretary. Um, as we know recently, uh, some uh, sen uh, senator uh, introduced uh, the Clean uh, Competition Act uh, at you, like at you the uh, clean um, uh, emission uh, for company for the producers who want to export to the US. Uh, some people say that uh, it can be like the uh, commerce uh, barrier for other countries to export to the US. Uh, can you share with us how potential it will be passed into the bill? And uh, the second one, do you think, what do you think about uh, the idea? And another question for the uh, Tech Hubs program. Um, as we know recently, uh, the U.S. Uh, upgraded uh, um, the relation to the highest level, and uh, the leaders of two countries also will agree to uh, cooperate more in uh, chips uh, producing uh, or industry. So, how is that a, a procedure? And uh, can you update uh, us about that? Thank you. Sure. So, um, I'm not going to comment on the specific. Um, uh, piece of legislation that may have been introduced. But I will say this, the uh, clean energy and renewable energy is, uh, again, uh, one of the key um, areas for, for this administration. Not only has EDA been a part of that, but you, as you know, you may have heard also how the Department of Energy uh, most recently announced the hydrogen hubs. Um, we're, we work across the board uh, to make sure that we're finding those new technologies. And again, these are areas where we're looking at uh, different types of partners, both domestically and um, uh, abroad. Uh, the transition to clean and renewable energy is, is paramount. Um, I would like to use this moment also to, to um, underscore why this is. It's not just uh, on the economic front, but also 
with regards to climate change. One of the areas that EDA works uh, very closely in is uh, in disaster recovery. And as we think about both, um, the transition uh, writ large, we're also looking at how are what are the types of technologies that we can uh, bring to market that will also help us uh, address climate change. So um, a very broad scope of projects, programs, policies that are being undertaken both under the bipartisan infrastructure law but also under the Chips and Science Act to make sure that um, we continue to grow clean energy and um, other options across the board. Thank you. Sure. Um, you know, with respect to um, partnerships amongst other countries, uh, you know, the tech hubs are, are really, we are really looking for and focused on these place-based regional investments, but um, these, these regions are all operating in the context of the global economy, especially as they're focused on uh, innovation-centric industries. Um, and, and to that end, um, we expect them um, to be working with uh, companies from kind of across the globe um, and in, in industries and, and that, that foster innovation and pursue innovation um, in these related industries. So um, you know, we would expect for investment, we would expect uh, best practices sharing uh, amongst regions, um, across countries, um, and, and just fostering that dialogue to, to enable that type of collaboration. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Lee, did we have a follow-up? Oh. oh, yeah, I have a question uh, for to follow up uh, the type of uh, director. Uh, what do we think, uh, what are you thinking about uh, the potential of cooperation with Vietnam specifically in uh, chip uh, producing? Uh, so on, on chip producing in particular, um, we won't comment on specific industries, uh, particularly because we're in the midst of this uh, competitive part of the competition of the program. Um, and so um, we're, we're really not commenting on particular uh, particular technologies or particular industries that are represented in the portfolio of hubs. Um, that being said, I think, um, you know, those those hubs are looking to build out their applications and um, they can be reached via contacts on our website. Um, and I uh, I can imagine that that um, there would be some interest in 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 hearing from um, potential partners. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alex submitted his question via chat. I'm going to ask it on his behalf. Uh, this is Alex uh, Weinert from the German Financial Daily Borsten Zeitung. Um, Assistant Secretary, you spoke about your visits to Germany, where the IRA has been discussed controversially. To which extent have the visits by you and your colleagues from the Treasury helped to increase the uh, constructivity of the dialogue? Which role do which role does co cooperation with German companies and direct investments by German companies in your long-term plans uh, factor for the regional tech hubs? Um, so, Alexander, thank you for, for that question. Um, as I mentioned before, I was in Germany uh, maybe two months ago. I did travel with my colleague Heather Boucher from the Council on Economic Advisors. This was, uh, again, an invitation from the German government, which we have worked with in the past. Um, interestingly enough, through the American Competitiveness Exchange, um, Germany has been a, a, a loyal partner in that effort. So a couple of things that I would say is um, uh, very robust discussions on, th on those areas that um, impact our respective countries, among them not only uh, technology and innovation, but most importantly, workforce development. So there was a, a very robust discussion. Uh, how do we make sure that the workforce is actually um, uh, being trained or upskilled, stackable credentials, uh, very broad conversation, and uh, as well, uh, a conversation on entrepreneurship, uh, not just talking about workforce development as it relates to various industries, but also finding ways to support uh, those new enterprises that will be uh, journeying with us as we uh, introduce uh, new technologies for the board. So, very robust discussion. Uh, Germany remains one of our uh, important partners um, and more to come. Thank you so much. While you're still at the podium, Assistant Secretary, I wonder if you could provide a snapshot of EDA's accomplishments as we're coming up at the uh, to the end of the year. 
Yes, so 2023 was a, a very exciting year at EDA. Um, and I'll start with a very important number, and that's $8.5 billion in private investments. Um, that also accounted for over 27,000 jobs. Um, across the board, EDA is being called now more than ever to not only talk about or discuss the areas of economic growth for the United States, but as uh, my colleague Eric mentioned, we're talking about both economic growth as well as national security. It's an exciting time. I, I've said it numerous times uh, during this uh, press conference. It's an exciting time for the U.S. It's an exciting time because not only are we investing in those industries of tomorrow, but we're investing in places that um, have at times been uh, overlooked or uh, not necessarily focused on, and yet uh, underscoring the fact that there are assets, talents, opportunities in many of these communities. We talk about regional economic growth. We're not talking about city growth or state growth. We're talking about regional economic growth. Um, many of you know economic growth has no boundaries. And along that line, it is important for us to um, emphasize that as the U.S. continues to make these very important investments, um, our collaboration with our um, colleagues across the globe is going to be also important. Eric mentioned um, uh, communities of practice and uh, sharing and lessons learned. I think this is going to be important for many, many countries who are also grappling with equity and inclusive growth, uh, as well as uh, ensuring that we're bringing along uh, the technologies and innovations that are going to make our lives better. So that's exciting across the board. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any other hands raised. So with that, um, I'll invite you to make any closing remarks or comments you wish. Sure. Uh, well, I just want to thank you all for your interest here today. Um, I think the, the Tech Hubs program uh, as a new program at EDA with its focus on economic and national security, uh, with its focus on specific technologies, with the place-based nature of, of the program. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a new paradigm of, for EDA uh, and an evolution uh, of how we do business and how we support economic growth throughout the United States. Um, we're doing that kind of at the, uh, at the regional, at the local level, uh, through our regional offices, at the regional office, through some of these national programs. Um, so I encourage you all to learn more. Um, again, we've, we've put out information on all 30 hubs, uh, as well as more information on the program. Uh, you can find it at techhubs.gov. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. So I just want to say thank you again. Thank you again for the invitation on behalf of Secretary Raimondo and the Biden-Harris administration. Uh, just want to underscore a couple of things. One is, this is a time of transformational uh, growth. This is a time for making sure that we have participation across the board from various stakeholders, as was mentioned before, uh, academia, community colleges, nonprofit organizations, philanthropy, the private sector. Um, for the U.S., the effort of equity and inclusion is paramount. We know that to be true with regards to not just uh, growth, but also creating high-paying jobs and uh, promoting uh, entrepreneurship. I also want to say that at the end of the day, um, EDA stands uh, ready to continue its mission to um, support the ecosystems that drive economic growth. Um, and today's discussion was just a slither of what EDA does. Tech Hub is a, uh, a um, key program for us. It is the program that is actually weaving uh, between economic growth and national security. We're looking forward to continuing to partner with many of uh, many of you, but more importantly with uh, so many uh, countries around the world for whom this can also be very beneficial. Um, the quality of life that uh, technology innovation can bring is not just in terms of uh, opportunities in terms of medicine and quantum and these critical technologies, but it's also about making sure that we provide um, good paying jobs uh, and um, and accountability across the board. So I'm excited. Thank you very much for being here and thank you for the invitation. Thank you. And that concludes today today's briefing. The transcript will be posted on our website uh, later today. Um, thank you and good day.